So um, uh, I today I, I speak about. I'm actually an immunologist, and uh, today I will speak mainly about a non-immunological cell, which is the smooth muscle cell, um, which I realized is, which I thought is very boring, but realized it's of some importance, um, not only for contraction. Um, but that's, that's basically my group, uh, or it was my group two years ago. Uh, it has changed, of course. And uh, I always show this, and this is particular for recruiting people. This is my drive uh, to, to my house. Uh, and of course, those who, who want to come, they can have a similar drive. It's a Chapman Speak, a world famous Chapman Speak. Um, they closed it for a couple of years now because uh, a big uh, stone fall on the car of a, um, of a person who died. Uh, and then they decided to make this drive a bit more safe and it took about two years to make it a bit more safe uh, with, a, with a Swiss company. Um, and now a lot of the attraction is gone because it's now probably too safe. It's no, you know, no adrenaline shock anymore if you drive there. So. <laughs> um, we work on, on a couple of uh, human disease models in mice. Um, and of course, um, when I came 12, 13 years ago from Germany, uh, from a Max Planck Institute to South Africa, I had to change a little bit topics. Uh, and I went a little bit more African-related diseases like African trypanosomiasis, Leishmaniasis, TB. We, we start now uh, quite intensively to work. And uh, helmet infection, uh, allergy and colitis, so non-infectious non diseases as well. Today, I will focus mainly on, on helmet infection and allergy. Um, uh, what I always write in, in, in uh, justify my, my work is it's four of the WHO declared top ten uh, diseases to, to fight, uh, to find uh, solutions. Um, my main interest is uh, cytokines and from the cytokines um, it's the IL-4 and the IL-13 and uh, the interleukin-4 and interleukin-13 are very, very important cytokines, which you uh, will see a little bit. What we decided to, uh, years ago, uh, to how to approach that is by uh, doing knockout mice, which um, I did a, a global knockout, alpha receptor knockout, which is the chain um, for, for both IL-4 and IL-13, the important chain, the signal transducing chain. Uh, we did the knockout and had a couple of uh, initial um, experiments uh, where it really turned out that alpha receptor alpha is, a, is an important uh, receptor for the um, for immunological responses. And here I just made a summary of, of IL-4 and IL-13, which is involved in so many diseases. I stopped somewhere to, to write a disease down. Basically, it's involved in, 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 in most of the diseases in one way or the other. And you notice the, the, the counterpart uh, of this uh, TH, TH two type uh, response is IL-12 and IL-18, which makes the TH1 response uh, important for bacterial, um, for, for bacterial infection like TB. Um, it's just the counterpart. And uh, uh, in our knockout model, we found out quite a lot of, uh, about the function. Um, we moved on then. Global, uh, global deficiency has always a lot of side effects, of course, because uh, all the cells are knocked out in IL-4 receptor, and, and uh, we wanted to be a little bit more specific, specific um, and therefore we started to do cell-specific knockouts. And I just shortly explain how, how this works. Uh, we floxed uh, the, the IL-4 receptor alpha gene uh, with LOX-P sites. This is um, 30, 34 base pair sites in introns. Um, which gives a silent mutation and cross then the, well, by gene targeting, by the way, and cross then these mice with a Cre recombinase, uh, bacteriophage recombinase Cre, which recognize this Cre, uh, recognize these LOX P sequences, and everything what is in between takes it out in vivo in the mouse system. So, of course, if you have a, a cell type cell type specific uh, uh, promoter, you can cell type specifically knock it out. And that works like that, you intercross it, and then you have it uh, uh, on, on, uh, within the mouse. And in cell types where Cre is not expressed, the IL-4 receptor is still present. 
And in cell types where Cre is expressed, like the cell type X, the alpha receptor is knocked out. Like this you do um, cell, cell type specific knockouts. And we started with uh, the macrophage neutrophil uh, specificity uh, with a lysozyme, uh, lysozyme promoter. These Cre mice were available and knocked it out macrophage specifically. And this uh, brought us a, a lot of interesting results. We started with Bilharzia, where we showed that actually alternative activated macrophages, these macrophages which, which are activated by, via IL-4 or IL-13, they are called so-called alternatively activated macrophage. Nobody knew the function, what they really do. It's just we knew that this was existing. That these ones are very, very important. For example, they're essential, essential actually to, to, to survive Bilharzia uh, uh, schistosomiasis. And uh, also play a role in obesity, which a colleague, uh, which we did in a collaboration with um, uh, with a colleague in Stanford, um, they they are important to downregulate inflammation. Um, so they have immunomodulating um, properties, and they are also important in tissue repair and remodeling. And we're just working very hard on on uh, on, on some of the remodeling uh, projects and try to show what kind of functions these, these cells really have. Uh, and they are also important in, in uh, cancer and immune suppression, or can be important in immune suppression. And uh, an a, a, a Italian colleague, Bronte, uh, showed that they actually are the, um, they are very important to, to suppress the killer function. They are so-called so the su suppressor cells. Uh, moreover, they are important uh, in immune pathology, which we showed uh, in Leishmaniasis, and also a colleague now of mine uh, um, showed that the same happens in Cryptococcus. So, uh, really important function of this alternative activator macrophage. I just wanted to show that because I don't really speak about these um, macrophages today. Um, but the conclu conclusion from, from this research is that um, alternative activated macrophage down modulate or suppress the schisto nutritional cancer others induced inflammation and the list becomes more and more and more so uh, macro these macrophages have down modulatory uh, effects and uh, the current status is that we try to identify which genes they express are responsible for this down modulatory effect and there's actually already a, quite a list of arginase FIS1, uh, reactive oxide intermediates, and uh, lipoxygenase, and others are uh, candidates for suppressing candidates. They either suppress Th1, Th2 cytokines, proliferation, or increase apoptosis of, of immunologically important cells. So oh, we have now, sorry, we have now some functions and start to understand what their role really is. Um, subsequently, we produced a couple of, of uh, other cell type specific knockouts, which is listed here, along epithelial cells, smooth muscle cells, CD4 T cell receptor, alpha, beta, uh, and gamma, delta T cell receptor mouse, or alpha, beta alone, B cells, and dendritic cells. Uh, you see the, the last uh, is, is still unpublished. I must say we, we are we are working heavily, we have these mice now, and we are working heavily to find phenotypes. And uh, I, I should say, in all these mice, we found very interesting phenotypes. Uh, with the dendritic cell, where we knocked out alpha receptor, uh, specifically, we, we look at the instruction theory in, in DC for IL-4 uh, mediated instruction for TH, TH1 uh, responses. Um, but today, as I said, I want to uh, put your attention, focus your attention on the smooth muscle cell, which I believe is a quite boring, immunologically boring cell. And it turned out it has quite a lot of effects immunologically, which I want to show you. Um, so we, we, knocked it, we knocked it out cell type specifically and, and showed this, for example, with facts and um, where we uh, looked, sorted actin from our water, smooth muscle cells. <coughs> Uh, alpha actin positives and showed that um, they have impaired alpha receptor alpha expression. 
in green is the is the wild type in red is the complete global knockout and in blue is the smooth muscle cell type specific knockout we also of course showed this also on, on functional level on dna level as well as on rna level i don't want to bore you with this results um, and now I want to go to, to one of our models, our infectious disease models, and one of them is uh, Nipostrongylus Nipostrongyl brasiliensis, which is uh, an experimental nematode model for uh, human and animal hook hookworm worm infection um, with 0.6 billion people infected worldwide and uh, striking morbidity um, like anemia, malnutrition, developmental problems. Of course, all these people in developing country. Um, I should say, Almond infection is really, really quite tough. A third, a third of, of the world population is infected with at least one helmet constantly. And uh, morbidity and mortality is quite high uh, with a, an actually a, a disease which is easy treatable with drugs. So um, why I particularly show this photo is uh, Claire Hoving. She's a student of mine and she likes she does photography quite professionally, and she won a couple of uh, awards with this with this photo, where we sh where she showed um, Nepostrongylus, which we isolate in vitro. What uh, how we can get how we and the mouse can get infected with uh, with um, this kind of worm? Um, Uh, usually, you, you, you eat a worm, we do it subcutaneous, uh, we infect uh, subcutaneously, and then the worm crawls, or the, the larvae, it's a larvae, L3 larvae, it crawls to the lung, gets cuffed up, and swallowed down and goes into intestine. Um, so w once it's cuffed up, uh, goes into the lung, it, it actually goes, crawls through the lung to get into the branches to, to be cuffed up. And then lives in the intestine, oops, lives in the intestine uh, where it lays, lays its eggs, uh, which goes out into the with the feces. The responses are actually quite easy. Uh, the helminth induces a strong, from a naive uh, helper cell, a strong T helper 2 cell, and T helper 2 produce uh, IL 5, for example, Th2 cytokines, IL 5, which activates eosinophils, and they put their chemical bombs to the to the gut dwelling worm, um, they uh, IL-4 activates uh, uh, is a switch factor for B cells to IgE responses, uh, and IgE binds to the receptors on mast cell, and also they have their their chemical bombs which they throw onto the helmet, uh, as well as IL via IL-13, uh, they activate goblet mucus production, goblet cell mucus production, also there to try to put their stuff uh, onto it in order to try to eliminate uh, the worm in the intestine. Um, so what we did, we, we just infected mice, global knockout, wild type, and the smooth muscle cell specific R4 receptor knockout with this um, gut dwelling worm. And the reason why we did that is we thought, okay, perhaps, you know, smooth muscle cell contraction is important for, for or helps also mechanically to get rid of the worm. Um, so that you, you, you see the color scheme, the wild type mice, uh, the control mice are always in black, the global knockout is always in red, and the smooth muscle cell specific alpha receptor knockout is always in yellow. When you look at a wild type mouse uh, after infection, you, you, for example, measure the egg in, in the feces. You can see that there is uh, some egg production, and then it goes down. Why? And wild-type mouse is actually immune against the worm and gets, get rid of the worm with all this function which I explained to you. Um, a global knockout, alpha receptor knockout, is not able to completely get rid of the, of the worm, and the uh, uh, feces production is still present uh, after two weeks eventually it becomes chronic and eventually can solve it, but, but it takes a time. So global IL-4 receptor knockout mice are, are highly susceptible to, to, to this worm infection. So we asked the question, what happened if we just knock out IL-4 receptor on smooth muscle cell? This, does it have an effect? And to be honest, I didn't expect a big effect or effect at all. But in yellow, you can see it. We have clearly a, a delayed something in between a global knockout and a wild type mouse. It had an effect and it did de delayed expulsion. Um, and when we measured the worms, we also could see at day 10, 
we found a worm in the intestine in, in the alpha in the global knockout, nearly nothing in the wild side because it expelled already, and as you can see, quite a bit of uh, in the smooth muscle cell alpha receptor knockout, which clearly shows that smooth muscle cell specific deficient mice show a delayed worm expulsion. Um, then we characterize these mice, what actually happened, and what happened is, for example, that um, at day seven in red, you see this goblet cell mucus production uh, in, the, in, in the intestine. And you see this in a wild type mice. Global knockout doesn't have it, uh, I told you. The, the mucus production is depending on IL-4 and IL-13, and the global IL-4 receptor, of course, is not responsive to the cytokine, so they can't do it. And also in the smooth muscle cell, we found a delayed response. Uh, at day 10, where actually it's already finished, more or less finished in a, in a wild type mice, we found then the response in a smooth muscle cell. And uh, when, we, when we counted uh, quantitatively the goblet cell, we indeed found a reduction in um, a smooth muscle cell specific alpha receptor knockouts at day seven, and then an increase as, as here at day 10. So it had an effect on, on, on um, goblet cell mucus production. Of course, the question is how a smooth muscle cell has an effect on goblet cell via, via the alpha receptor. Um, but not enough. With that, we found another effect, which, which I found, oops, there's something missing, which I found uh, even more intriguing. When we measured, and this is lost, when we measured the cytokines, um, and we measured IL-4, IL uh, IL-4 and IL-13 here, it's not written, and here interfering. When we measure the cytokines, then we saw in the cell type specific knockout that IL-4 is down in comparison to wild type as well as IL-13. So it had an effect on Th2 cytokines to knock out the, the absence of, of IL-4 receptor on smooth muscle cell. And that was really surprising. And, uh, and then, of course, we really got interested in, into this mouse and uh, asked the question, um, what, 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 what's the mechanism? So um, these are sorted CD4 cells, which were re-stimulated with uh, anti-CD3, and then the cytokine measured in the, in the supernatant. And uh, what we eventually found then is uh, quite interesting that we did a lot of uh, PCRs to check on expression. But the most important I show you in this picture, what we found is that M3 RNA expression was down-regulated in the global as well as in the cell type specific knockout. And M3 is a neurotransmitter, it's an acetylcholine receptor for, for neurotransmitting. Uh, and of course that is important for, for, for uh, the response in the smooth, uh, in the intestine. Uh, just to recall, <coughs> acetylcholine is, is expressed in, uh, in neuronal cells um, and acts via the uh, M3 receptor as well as in other cells. Uh, so somehow we got an indication that neuro neuronal cells are also involved uh, and, 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 uh, um, and dependent on alpha receptor alpha uh, uh, smooth muscle cells. And so we came up with a, with a hypothesis that probably um, the smooth alpha receptor alpha smooth muscle cell has, a, has an effect, we don't know the factors yet, on T helper 2 cytokines and probably on, on contraction. And that could be regulated perhaps via neuronal, um, uh, neuronal innervation. So eventually we tested the contractile response of the intestine. Um, uh, for, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in this, in this uh, machine where, where we infected mice, took out after seven or 10 days the intestine, a short piece of it, and measured contraction after acetylcholine stimulation. And indeed, when we did this, we found in a, in a non-infected wild-type mice had, uh, had the acetylcholine uh, response in, in contraction. That's the tension which we measured. And uh, when they were infected, they had a hyper responsive, they were hyper responsive towards it. So uh, this, this has been shown also by others that actually IL-4 and IL-13 um, in increased contractility, contractility in smooth muscle cell via the IL-4 receptor. 
When we did this, if we did this in an IL-4 receptor knockout, and that was the proof that it's really going via IL-4 and IL-13, we couldn't see any effect after infection with, with the worm. Why? Because the, the, uh, the, the receptor was not there, therefore IL-4 and IL-13 could not uh, play a hypercontractility force. And when we looked at a, at a smooth muscle cell, we found slight increase to, to control naive controls, but this was not significant. Um, because it has a high vari variety. So we did not find the, con the same contractile force as, as we saw in the wild-type mouse. So we, we could change with this, with this kind of analysis, we could change a little bit or add to the model of helmet infection and uh, put in the, um, the smooth muscle cell as a, as a very important uh, or as an important cell contributing to the expulsion of the worm um, by um, IL-4 and IL-13 having contractile forces. So this through physical contraction probably, as well as um, an influence on, on T helper two responses. And this could be neurological innovation. We haven't proven that, that this is the case. We don't know exactly the factors which are involved to have this uh, suppressive uh, effect. Uh, this is now what, we, what we're trying to find in a, in a new approach, uh, in a uh, microarray and, and other uh, uh, genomic approaches, transcriptomic approaches. Um, but it was the, the striking effect is for, for immunologists is that it is so-called boring smooth muscle cell. You just knock out a receptor and it influences the whole immune system. That's really novel and, and important. Um, we also showed in, in some of the other knockouts that actually the TH2 is more important for the, for the memory response against the nipple than to the actual primary response to the nipple. This we showed in T-cell specific, uh, CD4 T-cell specific knockout, alpha receptor knockout mice. Anyway, um, was this just a peculiar um, effect and not too important. So we asked the question, is the influence of alpha receptor alpha responsive smooth muscle cell on TH2 type immune responses and contraction specific for the intestine? Is it an intestinal specificity or is it more general? In order to address that, we looked um, at lung. I told you this larvae goes uh, goes through the lung to get into the intestine and causes actually a lot of damage in the lung. Um, so we, we asked the question, does at this stage in the lung the smooth muscle cell also play a role because the arteries uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 the branches are of course have also their smooth muscle cell around. And interestingly, we found similar effects in the, in the lung where we had a, a reduction or a delay of mucus production, again, mucus production from goblet cells uh, around the airways. Um, and you see here is, is nearly nothing and only at day 10 we get more. So the same picture has happened in the intestine, it was in the lung as well. And we also histologically quantified that and, and clearly showed a significant reduction of it. And uh, even so, the larval count, which we found in these lungs, was exactly the same in all three mice. So the cause was not that it had a diff different burden, uh, larval burden in the lung. It had nothing to do with that. It was quite an important uh, control. And when we looked at a airway hyper-responsiveness, it's the same as you do in allergy. The resistance to breathe, <laughs> this, this resistance we, we can measure, we found that, uh, of course, wild-type mice had a, had a uh, a strong airway hyper-responsiveness because of the damage which happened and the inflammation would happen, um, and the alpha receptor not, but the smooth muscle cell had also quite a bit of, of, of problems with that. Um, and again, when we looked at, at, at M3 as an indicator if, if uh, acetylcholine receptor is involved, we found differential expression. At day seven it was less than in the wild-type mice, and at day 10 it was much more than wild-type mice, so similar as, as in the intestine. 
And then eventually we looked at the CD3 uh, cells in the lung, and what we found there is that the recruitment of CD3 cells in smooth muscle cells, specific alpha receptor knockouts was reduced, which we can see quanti qualitatively here uh, in, 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 in uh, fluorescent staining of CD3 cells, and quantitatively when we counted them, uh, we saw a clear-cut reduction at day seven, but not at day 10. So the, the, all the delay happening also in the lung. And when you count the CD4 T cells, it was uh, uh, also much lower in the, uh, in the smooth muscle cell specific knockout. So the question we answered is the influence of alpha receptor smooth muscle cell on Th2 type immune response and contraction specific for the intestine is no. Uh, it's also active during lung infiltration. So this became then much more important for us, and we started to look at another model. And then we came to the schistosomiasis, which is also it's a trematode, it's also a worm. Um, it's uh, schistopilharsia, it's also called. It's one of the most communicable diseases within, with 200 million infected and 80% are in Africa. Uh, it's a chronic disease, but uh, as I already said, it could be treated easily controlled by single yearly dose of praciquantel, which flushes out the, the worms, which unfortunately the people don't get. It costs 18 cents, the tablet. Um, so you can see that some of these problems of infectious disease is not a problem of us scientists not to know what to do. Is I think that really the people get the drug uh, where they live, and obviously it is not the case. Um, you can get con uh, you can get uh, you can get infected with schisto in, in the Victoria Lake here in uh, Malawi, for example, if you do holidays there, um, and the worm, the male when the female are paired with each other for their lifelong. So they have constant sex, uh, and produce the, uh, the, the female produces eggs, which goes in, in particular in the, in into the lung and into tissue, and stuck, gets stuck there and builds granuloma. Uh, and then with the granuloma, granuloma it's come to fibrosis, and the disease, the human disease, and, and problems like liver, gut, kidney, and bladder, and chronic infected people look like that. Um, it's uh, really distributed uh, quite well in, in Africa. As you can see, it's not a South African disease, only the north of, this is South Africa here, only the north of South Africa has this problem, the rest of the country has no problem with it. Um, so what we did as a study, we have this in, uh, model of, of uh, schistosoma infection in mice, and uh, what mice do is they actually start, uh, they die after a while. So when we tested this mouse model, wild-type mice survived and, and started to die between nine and 10 weeks. Uh, knockout, we published that before in an immunity paper uh, with the alternative activated macrophage, which are essential to, for survival. The global knockout dies very early, between seven and eight weeks. And what you can see is that the, there was a delay in mortality, uh, uh, there was an early mortality in the smooth muscle cell alpha receptor specific knockout mouse uh, here. As you, as you can see, and that was very, um, uh, this, this happened also if we did, if we made the dose response infected with different saccharias, that's the, that's the, uh, the eggs, the larvae, and uh, we always saw increased mortality in the smooth muscle cell alpha receptor knockout mouse, even if you used 70 saccharia, none of the wild type died in, in, in eight weeks. Is in this in this time, whereas 10% died, 37%, and so on. We always found an increased um, mortality rate in the smooth muscle cell. As you can see, it's not as strong as the global knockout, but certainly had a striking had an had an effect. So uh, we checked what what happened. We looked at pathology. Uh, has it an influence on the fibrosis or in the granuloma formation? And we could not see anything, and could not uh, between the smooth muscle cell and the alpha receptor control mice, minus LOX control mice. And also the granuloma area, when we quantitatively analyzed that there was not much of a difference. So it seems it was not a problem of liver granulomas. Um, and also when we, when we checked the uh, mesenteric lymph node, mediastinal lymph nodes, or mesenteric uh, lymph nodes, we did not see what we saw in the helminth infection. We did not see a difference in, in the cytokine production. So there it was not that uh, strong. but. Uh, also, the, the pathology in the intestine, uh, this is a naive uh, intestine, this is nice lobes, 
and that is a, a wild type. You see, there are there are uh, eggs stuck, and they build then these horrible granulomas around them. Here you can see an egg. Here you can see an egg, and in the alpha receptor knockout. And between this wild type and and or the control mouse and the smooth muscle cell, we didn't see much of a difference. So also their pathology seems to be similar. However, what we found is when we uh, counted the egg in the feces, we found less egg in the smooth muscle cell. And less egg in the feces for, uh, means that more eggs get stuck in, stuck in, the, in, the, in the organs. Uh, so um, as you see in the global knockout, they, a lot of egg gets stuck in the organs. So they had a problem to expel, to expel the, the eggs. And of course, this is complete. Think about in the helmet, what, what I showed you before is a, is a, was a helmet, a hookworm, is a helmet that lives in the intestine and gets, gets the egg through uh, in the feces. Whereas these ones, the schisto, they live in, in inside the body and the eggs go via the blood circulation uh, to the intestine and crawl out into the lumen. So it's just the other way around. And so this was a, a, an interesting result which we found. And uh, then we thought, okay, let's measure contractility because also there it is perhaps this physical contraction helps to get rid of the, of the eggs out of the, out of the lumen. And uh, when we measured acetylcholine dependent contraction, we found normal ones in, in wild type, actually hyper, hyper responsive uh, contraction in comparison to naive one. It's very strong, much stronger than in, in, uh, in the nipostrongulus. In the knockout, there was no uh, increased contraction uh, because R4 and R13 could not do their function. And also in the smooth muscle cell, it was a striking reduced contraction, as you can see here. There's no significant difference between these two. Um, so we concluded from that that R4 receptor alpha responsive smooth muscle cells increase the intestinal hypercontractility and contrib contribute to the resistance in, in schistosomiasis. So the, cha the, the effect which we see in NIPA was also valid for, in a di slightly different way, uh, for, for schistosomiasis. Uh, this is not published yet. We just got it um, uh, accepted uh, in the American Journal of Physiology. Uh, it should come out in, in a month or two. Um, what we also could conclude is that IL-4 and IL-4, IL-13 induced smooth muscle cells are active participants in host protective responses against helminth infection. We showed this in two models, in, in the nipple model, in lung and in intestine, as well as in the schister model. I would not be surprised if we use other helminth models uh, with this mouse that we also find some functions. Um, that is the reason I present that because it has, to, uh, it has a, a more general effect, uh, unexpected general effect of the smooth muscle cells. But now I'd like to switch gears a bit. Um, we also work on, on allergic asthma. And we work on allergic asthma because the immunological responses in allergic asthma and in helminth infection is more or less the same. Um, allergic air asthma is airway, airway inflammation of allergens. Uh, and uh, this is an obstruction of a human actually who deceased uh, from, from an from a, a allergic uh, attack. It's also lots of mucus, hypo, uh, mucus uh, secretion and so on. And the allergic asthma model is actually exactly the same as a, as a helmet model. Just look, it's an antigen present the cell, the, TH, TH, the naive TH develops to a TH2, and then IL-4 acts on eosinophils, IL-13 on goblet cells, B cells switch to IgE on mast cell, and this all starts to destruct or, or uh, obstruct the airways, and that is the the reason why we can't breathe anymore. So it's a very similar model. So that's not surprising that I work on helmet as well as on allergy because it's immunologically very similar. Oh. Sorry. Um, so what we have is, is the usual ovalbumin induced allergic asthma. You sensitize mouse uh, with ovalbumin IP uh, two, t uh, two times a day seven and day f 14 and then you uh, challenge the mice with uh, intranasally uh, and do the analysis uh, a few days uh, later. Uh, that's the model 
and then you measure airway resistance basically and uh, if you just look if you if you measure that and we have three different non-invasive and invasive this uh, is an allergy thing uh, you can measure it in different ways and nowadays the the, the most of the allergic uh, journals want to want to have that you measure all of them uh, so we measure that and as you can see um, in uh, the airway hyper responsiveness is 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 uh, uh, strikingly up. Oh, here I made a mistake. Um, the in red here is the control mice. It's strikingly up in control, in red in control mice, as well in the smooth muscle cell, but it's down in, in uh, uh, knockout mice. So it was the same response as a wild type mouse. And uh, so there was no difference. We didn't find a difference. And when we look at the inflammation, allergic inflammation, we could find a difference between now it's a correct again with the color scheme. Uh, in black is the control mice, in yellow the smooth muscle cell alpha receptor, and, and, and in red the knockout. We couldn't find a different cell infiltration. Eos, eosinophils, neutroph neutrophils were similar. Lymphocyte and, and macrophages were similar um, between control mice and cell-specific knockout mouse. Um, we could also not find a difference in, in uh, other markers for, for ASMFL to measure peroxidase or mast cell markers or smooth muscle cell markers. There was no difference. So they, they uh, in the absence of alpha receptor on smooth muscle cell, they had a normal AHR, they had normal cell infiltration, everything was normal. Um, and they had also normal goblet cell hypo hypoplasia. So in contrast to what I showed you in, in helmet infection, in, in asthma it was all the same. And here you see from an uh, airway, the goblet cell mucus production, and this in smooth muscle cell, and of course the global knockout didn't have uh, mucus production. Just different stainings here. So, and when we looked at the TH2 responses, it was also very normal. I had normal IgE responses, gamma, gamma-1 responses, um, and uh, uh, over specific gamma-2 uh, gamma responses was, was all very normal, black and, and yellow, you must compare here. Um, and then when you, when you look at the cytokines, the black and the yellow was not significant different here. Here it was up, IL-5 was up, interestingly, and IL-13 was up. So there we found, there we found uh, interesting differences but just the other way around, uh, as, as we found in, uh, in, uh, in, in the helmet infection. And interferon was normal. So more or less normal over-induced TH2, respo TH2 responses concerning IL-4 and a bit more IL-4 and IL-5 and IL-13. So our conclusion was that impairment of IL-4 receptor, IL-4 responsive smooth muscle cells does not prevent over-induced allergic airway inflammation. Uh, we, we published, we are able, we, we just got it ex accepted in JACI, uh, one of the top allergy journal. And the reason is that we got accepted the negative result is that it, there it was expected that they play a role uh, because of the contraction, because the contractile force of the airways was always believed, induced by, hyperinduced by alpha and alpha 13 was believed as one cause of the, of the airway resistance. And op apparently it's not. Um, so that was a, a, an interesting and surprising result. Um, now I show you a, a collaborative project on the same, on the, also on smooth muscle cell with a slightly with a different approach. SMP8 is also a smooth muscle cell specific uh, prom promoter. And here was the idea uh, which we did in collaboration with uh, Fred Finkelmann from Cincinnati to actually reconstitute in an IL-4 receptor alpha knockout background, which don't do allergic asthma because they, there's not, no response, to reconstitute IL-4 receptor positive smooth muscle cells and check if they are able to induce um, allergic asthma or parts of allergic asthma. Of course, we thought it will probably not happen because of these results which we had. That is not important to have it. So. Um, the, the idea was that it was done by doing a transgenic mice, which has 
a smooth muscle cell specific promoter and a cDNA for a file for receptor. Um, the, uh, the, the, the promoter was, was um, the cell, cell type specificity of the promoter was checked in rosa mice, uh, which, which uh, induce a fluorescence. And you can see the arterial, nice smooth muscle cell, all the la layers were correct. And then when we looked in, the, uh, in our reconstituted mice, we indeed found um, uh, we indeed found in the smooth muscle cell in red, uh, in, in where is it? Here, we we found back the um, alpha receptor alpha expression. In green is the knockout expression. Sorry that I have a complete different uh, color scheme. This is uh, from my collaborator who sent it to me. So basically, we had a, a, a reconstitution of the alpha receptor. And uh, then a, a really a, res a, a funny observation came. We did again the airway hyper-responsiveness. -res and uh, as you can see, the alpha receptor didn't respond, had not much. The a, a wild type control, a control mouse had uh, increased airway hyper-responsiveness. And interestingly, our reconstituted mouse had also increased hyper-responsiveness, as you can see here. And it was, they did it in, in three or four different models. It was always there. So our four receptor positive smooth muscles are sufficient to induce airway hyper-responsiveness. Um, and that was measured really with dust mite allergen, with OVA, with three different systems, and uh, confirmed that this is indeed happening. So the conclusion here was a long story, very short. The conclusion was that alpha receptor alpha responsive smooth muscle cells are not needed uh, for AHR, which I showed you in the in the previous in our model, but are sufficient to induce airway hyper responsiveness in global alpha receptor knockout mouse. So they can do it if you take them away. It has not a, a phenotypical effect, but they can do it, um, and that's that's quite important to to know, and uh, it was just, I think we have it in revision in, in JXMED in the moment. So as uh, so a take home match message, um, I make very short take home messages. The role of alpha receptor, alpha responsive smooth muscle cells is to induce helminth hypercontractility, to upregulate TH2-like immune responses, and uh, the uh, alpha receptor, alpha responsive smooth muscle cells are not needed for airway inflammation, but are sufficient to induce allergic asthma. And uh, I'd like to stop to, to mention the team which, which we have, the genotyping team. We have a lot, of course, a lot of genotyping to do with our, our cell type specific mice. Uh, it's, uh, oopsie, is or was, is Hiram Arendse. He's meanwhile the animal facility manager. Uh, Regan uh, Peterson, he is the manager for the ICGB, meanwhile. Uh, Elizabeth Smith, she's in another department, and Wendy Green and Rayana Fredericks. Uh, and in the background, everybody knows this, I hope, is the beautiful table mountain with the tablecloth. Um, that is when the clouds just go down. It's quite rare to see that. Uh, this is another uh, signal hill. Lion's head, sorry, lion's head. The Shista Nipper uh, people are uh, Mosiwalito. Sorry, I get always the wrong. And uh, Rhys Marillier, who he, uh, in he introduced uh, contractility. And Bill Horsnell, he is the Nipper expert. And uh, uh, Heidi Merns, uh, she did uh, also Nipper. And Tiro Bogale, she did uh, the, uh, also the contractility. Uh, here in the, this is Robin Island where the, the Mandela lived, had to live for about 20 years uh, in a prison. Uh, it's now a, a, a lively museum and it's worth to go there if you have the chance. And uh, as you see the, the names, I, I did it in a couple of slides and the reason is of course I want to make you mouth watering to uh, see the beauty of, of this area. Uh, the allergy team is uh, Natalia, Natalie Nievenheisen and Frank Kirstein, who uh, did the uh, allergic asthma. 
And our collaborators was uh, Debrowski Herbert, a previous postdoc of mine, who is now in NIH, and Frank, uh, Fred Finkelmann's group, and Adrian Mountford, a Schister expert uh, from the UK. And here I stop. Thank you very much for attention.